So we will state and prove the theorem that if m is isomorphic to n, then they are elementarily equivalent. In fact, I will only prove a part of this theorem because the other part comes for free, so to speak, which is namely, I will only prove that m, if, any, uh, if m satisfies any sentence, then n also satisfies that sentence, and I will not prove the reverse direction. And the reason is because isomorphisms are symmetric. And so if I know that I can get this result from stating it in the order m and then n, I could reverse that order and get that any sentence satisfying n also satisfies phi by merely copying the argument. So I won't even do it. Uh, so, <clears throat> um, so I will only assume that we have some isomorphism j and some sentence phi which m satisfies. And I will show, my task is to show, that n also satisfies it. I won't prove the reverse because it comes for free. Now, as a lemma to help with that proof, I will uh, show that in some sense, the isomorphism maps individual terms in a, so to speak, isomorphic way. And what I mean by that is that, uh, sort of like you can understand isomorphisms in abstract algebra, which, you know, a common perspective is that uh, it tells you when two things are the same up to renaming. But another way to see it is that uh, you can either act first and then map, or you could map first and then act, and you get the same thing either way. And so that's what I mean by acting in some sense an isomorphic way on individual terms. And so I will prove this lemma. Uh, and it will aid in the proof of the rest of the theorem. Now, as always, model theory is messy. It splinters into cases and proved by induction. So that's what we have here. If our term is a constant term, then uh, mapping on the denotation of the term, well, it's a constant term. And by our discussion about how terms map as functions, so to speak, uh, uh, it always just maps to the same thing. It doesn't matter what a bar is. So that's just automatically what the denotation of the term is. Uh, and we are mapping it because J is an isomorphism, then it maps uh, to whatever this corresponding denotation of the constant term is uh, in N. That's part of the definition of an isomorphism. And then again, using the fact that it's a constant term and it does not, so to speak, respect the argument, it, do, it just always tells you the same thing regardless of what the argument is, we can say that it is the denotation of that term on some argument, it doesn't matter what the argument is, and the chain of equalities is true, and that part of the proof is complete. Uh, the case for variables is not much different and not very hard. The inductive case for functions goes like this and um, makes use of the fact that, okay, the term uh, denotes a function which maps according to whatever the argument is to each individual term. That's part of, again, the definition of how terms map. And the rest of the proof goes pretty understandably, um, also using just this little switch due to the fact that J is an isomorphism.